Hey, coaches, starting off today's Football Scoop Online Clinic, we've got Jeff Dubendeck, the former head coach of Culver Stockton and Lawrence Tech, who's going to share some play action screen concepts with us. So, coach, the floor is yours, man. All right, appreciate it, Doug. I um, want to start off by thanking Doug and the Football Scoop uh, staff for putting on these clinics. I know uh, during this unprecedented time, a lot of us would have gone through withdrawal symptoms had we not been able to talk some ball with other guys and, you know, get a little bit away from the family. Uh, you know, I love my kids, but 24 hours a day uh, is a little exhausting. So um, I also want to thank those Doug and the staff for allowing me to speak and giving me this platform. Um, and then finally, thank you guys for coming and checking us out and listening to this time, this speech on, uh, on play action screens um, and taking the time to listen to that. So, um, I always believe it's best when we learn as active participants. Um, so I'm going to give you uh, ways to contact me. So if you have any questions or anything or want some of this film, uh, just please feel free to reach out to me afterwards. Um, I know these are crazy times. We're all, and we're all hoping and praying it doesn't affect the fall. Um, but in the meantime, while you're forced not to go to work and stay home, please be present with your family, spend time with them. I truly believe God is telling us to take a step back, pause, and learn to enjoy the little things in life again. Um, this will all pass, but, uh, but take advantage of this time because I know as coaches, we're extremely, extremely busy, especially during the fall. Um, and again, make sure we're checking on our players. You know, uh, these are 18 to 22 year olds or 14 to 18 year olds, um, 12 to 14 year olds, depending on what level you're coaching. Um, it's got to be a scary time for them uh, in uncertain time and not really know what's going on. So when you're talking to them, make sure that you're talking a little bit more about uh, life and football and things like that. So um, now I'll step down off the, the soapbox a little bit uh, and start talking football. Uh, I'm currently between jobs, as Doug mentioned, and unfortunately lost my video library um, when my hard drive crashed. So this the film I'm going to show today is from NFL Game Pass, which is free to everybody right now. So I'd suggest jumping on there and checking it out. It's got great uh, Y-type film, um, all 22 films. So check it out. Um, it's unreal. I'm addicted. So, um, all right, let's get into it. I'm going to start off with a little intro here. Whoops. Hey, this is my presentation on play action screens. I'm Jeff Dubendek. This is my Facebook, Twitter, and email in case you need to get a hold of me. If you have any questions, um, I'd love to talk to all of the resolve any issues you may have, any questions you have after this presentation. When I get started on game planning or head into the off season and start taking a look at what we want to add and subtract from our, our playbook, I look first at our tendencies, um, our strengths and weaknesses, what, you know, what we excelled at, um, where we needed to improve, you know, our balance between run pass, run action pass, pass action run, um, you know, how we can complement things out of similar formations, how we can have a punch, counter punch. And in this case, I think play action screen is what I consider our uppercut. Um, and then at what cost, you know, how much practice time is it going to take? How much meeting time is it going to take? Are we going to have to take out some other plays to be able to install these plays? Or are they pretty cohesive to where it's going to be, uh, you know, limited practice reps to get good at what we're doing? I want to talk about the benefits of play action screens and why I'm spending my off season trying to uh, build a library of those so that I can add them uh, to our playbook for the upcoming season. One of the things I love about play action screens is the timing is built into most of these. It's not like drop back where you have to have a rhythm count or a technique count or a 1001. It's more um, part of the play and just happens. Um, so that allows you to not have to use as much practice time to perfect these. 
when you're running play action screens, the defense will first attack the run, then they'll race to catch up to you naked or get in your pass drop if you're setting up in the pocket, and then you're hitting them underneath again and they're having to change direction again. So I love the conflict that it puts them in, and it creates a lot of space on the playing field. Another thing is it causes a lot of confusion for defenses. Um, let's say if you're using a wide zone, we've got our wide zone, we've got our naked off our wide zone, we've got our naked throw back to the screen off the wide zone, we've got our wide zone set up, throw back to the weak side screen. Um, so four plays off of one um, with very minimal um, rule changes or anything like that. A couple more benefits that it has is it protects your run game weaknesses, creates counters for those. Um, it also protects your play action pass protections. In the run game, for instance, if a guy's wrong arm in the, um, the kick out on, you know, if you run a split wide zone and he's wrong arming that every time and then you're slipping him to get that screen game off, um, now he can't take that wrong arm every time. So it'll protect the run game there and give a counter there um, to make him so he's not always right on that. Uh, and then in the play action game, um, it creates some hesitation there. You know, in our play action game, we're trying to attack deep downfield. Um, and so our guys have to protect longer when they're firing off the ball. Sometimes that's a little bit more difficult uh, to protect for extended period of time. But um, if you create some confusion, some hesitation by adding some screens in there and uh, creating that hesitation with the line and linebackers, that'll buy you a little bit more time to have those deep downfield shots. And, in the meantime, you're getting the added benefit of some yardage through the screen game. Finally, I think the biggest benefit of uh, play action screens is the cost benefit factor. There's very minimal investment. Uh, obviously, some are going to have a little bit more than others, but uh, if you want to start at the base of these, there's a very minimal investment. They're so similar to your run game. Um, or so similar to your naked or play action game, and then you're just adding the, you know, the passing and off of it. So um, it protects everything, the minimal investment, and, um, and potential for huge reward. You can see some, some of these clips I'm about to show. Um, if you've got explosive players, you can get them to fall in space and um, make great explosive plays. All right. Um... So the next thing I want to talk about is kind of uh, get into our rules uh, for our wide zone. That's what I'm going to start with. Um, you can run this off of any run game. You just have to, you know, find how it fits into your scheme. Um, but I'm going to talk about wide zone first, show you kind of our install of wide zone, our install of gap misdirection, um, so our counter plays. And then I'll talk to you about the rules and how those stay consistently. Um, screen share that oh. all right so here's our wide zone install PowerPoint that we would go over with with our full offense um, kind of show you that stuff uh, set an a stretch um, here's the rules the old line is going to block zero one and two um, as we're going weak uh, or strong tight end would have number three if we're strong to the call. Uh, fullback or you will have number three away from the call. Um, and then Z's going to have most dangerous man. X is going to have a convoy. Um, and QB's got to identify if we've got four coming from the front side. Um, and we'll have our built in adjustments to that. So look or possible orange. Um, O-line, like I said, they're blocking with 0-1-2. Um, backside guard, backside tackler, negative one, negative two. Tight end blocks number three to the call or fullback. We've covered all that stuff. So here's some uh, pictures of it. Here's the key to the play. We're trying to move that DN. That's the front side DN. This is seven stretch. We're running to the left. Um, so we're trying to move the play side DN. That's who our tailback is king. So if we can get him to stay inside, we're going outside. If he stretches and goes outside, we're hitting it inside of him. 
and then we want to cut the back side of the back side of the defense and create a seam there for the tailback to be able to hit that downhill. Here's a uh, potential uh, change up to our wide zone. Uh, we're going to get some split flow, put the fullback on the backside DN and move the tackle out to the outside linebacker. Um, or we can flip those two back. So here's eight stretch. These are the three combination blocks that we're getting. We're getting a tackle tight end. Um, that's going to be two and three. And then uh, center guard, that's zero and one. And then backside tackle, backside guard is negative one, negative two. All right, versus the three down front. Again, this is seven or eight stretch. We're going to block the same guys going either way. Um, Tight end would be on number three to the call, and then fullback would be three away from. Halfback aiming at the butt of the tight end, reading the, uh, the end defensive lineman. So in this case, the five technique. Z, like we talked about, most dangerous man. X is a convoy. Uh, working away from that. So um, that is our, our wide zone rules. Now, as we get into our wide zone screen game, what changes and what stays the same? Like I talked about in my intro there, we're going to have a lot of similar rules. There's very minimal uh, rule changes as we get into this. Now, as I show you the film, I'm going to show you the kind of progression that I would use to intro this stuff. Start with some easy ones where there's really no timing or anything like that. And then you can get a little bit more complex where there is going to be some more timing um, and angle of departure issues and things like that. So uh, what changes and what stays the same? What stays the same? Angles of departure stay the same. We're selling our wide zone. We're getting on our tracks. Uh, we're running. We have the same line of force, right? So our target point is the same. We're trying to get uh, our line of force working uh, through that target point of the defender, right? And working vertical through that. Um, same aiming point. As a trail man, what this, now this is getting into what changes. As a trail man, if we're working a screen to the flow of the, of the wide zone, right? So if we're running seven stretch, so stretch to, to the left side, and our screen's going to end up on the left. As a trail man, I'm not going to force feed that D lineman to the lead man, right? And so if he's caught in between the two of us, I'm going to work to take him over. I'm not going to force feed him across and give the tail back the upcut. Because in the screen game, we're going outside. It's not going to be an upcut. It's going to be an outside uh, aiming point for that tail back, a receiver, or tight end, whoever's catching the screen. When I leave, another thing that changes is when I leave a double team for a second level defender, I'm gonna work flatter. Again, as I know uh, where that tailback is gonna be and where his, his attack point is, that's gonna be where my flash point is. That's where my trouble occurs, right? So if he's gonna be outside of me, I gotta work flatter to intersect that linebacker um, as he's aiming for the tailback, All right? So my flash point is widened from what? wide zone would be to wide zone screen. In any double, I always want to treat it as if I'm the lead man with the trail man, right? So if I'm solo, uh, if I'm the trail man or the lead man, I'm still treating it the same way. I'm, I'm assuming that there's a guy behind me to help. That way, if the D-line works behind, I can climb and block a next level defender. Because if he's working behind, he's not catching up on the screen. All right, don't block a ghost. Don't worry about him. He's disappeared. He's gone. All right. Uh, if he comes with you, sustain and finish that block. All right. Now, where it gets a little bit more complex is where we're screening away from the zone. So if we're running seven stretch and our screen is coming to the right, maybe to, a, to uh, the fullback as he's coming back on that wrong arm defender or a tight end from the backside that's blocking and then leaking out. 
Um, if we're running that screen, the backside half tackle has to get out. So he's going to shorten his angle of departure um, somewhat so that he can get out and get into the lead of that screen. Other than that, only non-engaged linemen lead. So as we take our steps, our zone steps, and get into our combos and we're engaged in the D lineman, all right, we're staying engaged in him until there is no – until we're able to force feed him to the lead man. And then we will leave to get back uh, into the screen, okay? Everyone else blocks the D line, uh, and then we'll force feed this, okay? So that is our wide zone. I want to show some film on that now. Um, and again, this film is in progression with the way that I would install it. I think uh, you want to start with your easier, less invested plays. If you like them, then you can invest more time and get a little bit more complex uh, as we go forward. So um, I'm going to pull up this film, and we'll take a look at it. I'll try to try to pause it as we get to uh, significant points because I think um, it's important. Or I, I want the film to catch up. I know a lot of this has been choppy, and I don't know how the flow's going. So, um, all right, right here as we go, we're looking at this in our. We're going to have two right here. Um, the DN is going to be number two, linebacker number one, nose is zero. So the center, left guard, left tackle are blocking these three defenders. That's our count, okay? Um, and then they're going to block MDM here, okay? Now this is counter or this is wide zone, naked screen back to the zone uh, concept. So this is seven stretch week. We're booting to the right and we're throwing back to the left. So it goes in flow with the flow of the play, but it creates misdirection for the, uh, for the defense, okay? So I'm pausing it right here. You can see there's, not, there's only two defenders outside of the hash. All right, everyone else's eyes are back on the quarterback thinking naked is going to come. So that's what we talked about earlier, where they're racing to catch up with naked and they're exposing this backside of the field. All right, so we leaked him out. Really, he's outside the hash, but he's a non-factor uh, because if he can catch this wide receiver, uh, we need to fire him and hire a new wide receiver. All right, so we've got our rat killer here looking to pick him up and then probably progressing to this linebacker. And then we've got our convoy of left guard, center, right guard getting out here. And you can see they're working pretty flat on this. Now, right there, beautiful picture again. Like I said, he's a non-factor. Uh, right tackle is going to work up to that linebacker. These two are free to block whoever, right? And we should have a touchdown here. What I don't like is he should continue to work to the outside and make him to work to the outside because he's got inside help. So his flashpoint is to his outside. We don't want to ever get beat to our flashpoint, right? Keep working to his outside leg and force him to the sideline, all right, rather than missing to the inside and letting him squeeze this back down. Still got a convoy out in front. We did make that guy miss. Uh, but now, obviously, guys are catching up, taking their angles, uh, just like any good defense is taught. So let's take a look at the end zone view of this. All right, again, two, one, zero. Those are the guys we're blocking center, left guard, left tackle. That's who we block in our wide zone. That's who we're going to block in our wide zone screen. That's negative one. That's negative two. That would be the right guard and right tackle. That's who they're taking. All right? Um, 
what I want you to see here is the right guard. Watch his angle of departure. Great angle of departure. And as I pause it here, right, we're in a great fit here. And if we were truly running wide zone, I would force feed this across and allow this up cut, right? This tackle, if we were truly running wide, wide zone, would stay on course and be blocking this linebacker, right? In this case, he's looking to, to rack kill. Uh, because it is naked screen, okay? But, again, we would force feed that. But, again, that is one of the changes. So, as we progress here, take another step. Oops, I missed it. He fights to get it. The right guard right here fought to get his hat front side, right? Because we're screen, we know we're going to be outside, so there's no – point of force in the inside, right? the outside, right? Some things I want you to notice about this uh, picture here. He is chasing the receiver on his naked route, his over route that's coming over here. Uh, he's chasing him on that, okay? This D lineman senses naked, and he's spinning out and working back to the quarterback. He's cheating the play. He's leaving his gap of responsibility, all right? This linebacker sees it. He's working back here, right? Everybody's working back to the naked, taking them out of this screen. Again, huge misdirection, huge confusion. The only guy that's not is him because he's got eyes on the receiver in a man-to-man -man concept. Now we progress a little bit farther. Again, here's the throw. And we talked about this with the tackle. The tackle should be working the outside leg because he's got inside help. He doesn't need to block inside. Work to the outside. This will continue to stretch this or get it cut, and the receiver could continue outside, all right, away from the flow defenders that are coming to catch up, all right? You can see the, the right tackle has number 69 on the right side of your screen here has transitioned from rack kill. He didn't need to. Uh, the D lineman was a non-factor, so now he's up in the convoy trying to, uh, to find the next biggest threat. All right, and then we're attacking downfield, being aggressive. Aggression wins, aggression wins, aggression wins, All right? So that is the wide zone screen concept. Are there any questions at this point? Nope, we're good. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to go with the wide zone. Uh, that was off the naked. Now we're going to go wide zone, set up in the pocket, and we're going to throw the ball to the screen, uh, to the stretch side. So here with the count, right, we're going to get split flow, fullbacks going backside. Um, so we're going to be here is two, that's one, that's zero. Um, and then the receivers would have these two here. Okay, we're running eight stretch screen right. As they motion away, he goes with. So, again, he's still blocking him. He's still got number 20 on the front side here. You can see great angles of departure here by the O-line. Um, I'll get into the right guard here uh, as we get into the end zone copy. Um, but it's a good job. Tackle does a good job. Um, great screen there. Okay, so again, Here's two, that's who the tackle's blocking. That is one, that's the guard, and he is zero. That's the center, all right? That's negative one, number 91 is negative one, 51 is negative two, okay? Um, so as we progress, I want you to watch this right guard here. He's gonna take that angle, and like I talked about, we're treating everything as though we're the lead man on a combo. So he's 
with a trail man helping us, right? So he's trying to overtake 99 here and doesn't care if he goes behind him, he's going to let him go. He's not going to chase a ghost. We beat him with the screen. So right there is, let me take it back just a hair. Right there is great helmet placement, great line of force, right? We'd be working vertical if we were in our run game through that and a solo block. Um, but here he's treating it as though the center is coming with him to help him because, again, if he works backside, we don't care. Aaron Donald sees this as play action, number 99, great pass rusher, uh, sees this as play action. So he's taken off. When he beats him, he feels, I got the quarterback now, all right? Um, so, again, protecting our play action protections by slowing him down as we progress in this game. Right guard left him, right? They're going center and right guard now can work for the DN and the linebacker with the tackle, right? And you'll see right here, all right, the DN showed color, so line and tackle didn't have it secured. Guard sees color, he's clearing color, right? We don't want to let anything stay. If it's not a sustained block, we want to secure first level first. Center continued on his flat course to get to the outside leg of the linebacker. The only thing I don't like about him is he's throwing on a non-aggressive player. Uh, as this film flows, you'll be able to see uh, that linebacker is, is scraping over top and backpedaling as that center comes to him. Um, so he goes to throw on a non-aggressive player. I would have stayed on my feet and ran accelerated feet through contact. Um, that would be the only thing that the coaching point there that I would say. Um, now this backside tackle, because we're setting up in the pocket and we're not running naked, uh, we've shortened our angle of departure there, all right? Tackling tight end would be working through 97 to 51 and they've shortened their angle of departure because they're more worried about 97, 51 is a non-factor towards the quarterback um, and obviously gets caught up in the play action here. So. so that was wide zone, set up in the pocket screen to the wide zone, All right? Now, these next two are going to be screen away from. And I probably should have flipped them because this first one has a little bit more coaching and I would probably install it a little bit later. Uh, but I'll show, show them in that order anyways. All right. Um, this one's a little different because as we motion, we're going to add into the count. So the count currently is 2-1-0. He's going to add in. So it's going to be 2-1-0. Right. In that case, our center just makes a plus call and it moves everyone forward. We don't have to re-ID and recount it. Uh, it's just it moves everyone forward plus one. All right. Um, so if you guys can count to three, they should be able to play in my offense. Now screen away. So it's eight stretch, screen left. And the reason this is more difficult is because the, the guy we're screening to is on the backside to start. So his angle departure is going to change and our number count on the backside is going to change. We're going to disregard it as that backside tackle. All right. Again, you're only count, coaching a minimal changes, but there are some. And again, this is one that has a little bit more. We get good action fake. And again, on our screens away from the action, like we talked about a little bit earlier, we are going to only get out if we're disengaged from a D lineman or if we're the backside tackle. Backside tackle has to be out. Anyone else that's engaged with the D lineman is staying engaged and blocking him. If you are disengaged and can force feed, Right now you can get out in the screen. So as you watch this here, you'll see the backside tackle has a 
reduced angle of departure, right? Um, we're going to make the plus call, like I talked about with uh, the DB. The center is going to force feed to the guard and get out in the screen. Great four speed. I'll pause it right at the four speed. Good angles of departure again, reduced angle for the backside tackle. You can see where his hat placement is and the, the separation between him and the backside guard. That wouldn't happen in normal wide zone. So that's a change for him. Everyone else looks like wide zone. See the center. He's just four speed 92 to the guard, right? And then he's going to get back in the screen. And as he releases and as the tackle release, watch their angle of departure. I love this. So I'll take it back so you can, I can slow screen it in case the video is playing funky. Um, but you can see they're facing the sideline. That's their angle of departure. They're running to get wide, right? We're running for outside aiming points on our defenders, right? And the tackle is going to end up blocking this linebacker, right, number 58. So a lot of guys want to go right to them. If you go right to them, you're going to lose over top. We need to intersect the aiming point for between us and where the tailback or the, the ball carrier is supposed to be, all right? We don't ever know that. He's always behind us but we need to attack it and we need to be structured in our offense so that our offensive linemen know where that guy's supposed to be. So great aiming point here by the tackle. I think the tight end probably should have taken his outside. He probably saw a vertical could get 10 yards and was happy with that. Um, but I think the tackle's taking a great aiming point on that linebacker. And then the center, I think I misspoke on that. The, the center's blocking that linebacker, not the tackle. Um, but you can see he's not going right to him. He's working flat to get around. And then he's taking an outside aiming point. And again, that, that ball carrier is cutting inside of us. Uh, he's putting his life in his own hands. He's not trusting his guys. So, um, but, you know, he's taking what's given to him. He gets the first down. Take that. Okay, final one. All right now we're going to get a split flow look. So our fullback is going to come back across on what I call a peel action. All right again, it's eight stretch. So we're aiming out here. Everyone's full zone in this way. What I like better about this one than the previous one is that backside tackle can take his normal angle of departure because this end is blocked by the peel fullback, all right? So he can still take his angle of departure to get here. Here's two, one, zero, all right? Negative one, negative two. So he's trying to block 77. He's trying to work up to the backside backer, all right? And then center, front side, guard, D tackle, tackle, D in, all right? Um, so you'll see it play out here, split flow. You see how the wrong arm is affected, right? And that's what I was talking about, counterpoints within our run game. If they're killing us with that wrong arm and filling gaps on it, right, and making everything bounce laterally in our run game, let's throw a tweak in there to make them think about it, make them work differently. Um, so as we tweak that right now, he might be a little bit more hesitant to dive inside when he's getting beat for big chunk plays on the screen. Um, or anything else, maybe a reverse you throw in there uh, to try to complement that. So, but great job by um, great job by the tight end here as he goes back, right? Sells that inside fake and then catches the ball. Now he does a good job of staying outside um, and reading his blocks. So you should be able to see that. Very good flow. 
All right, again, watch angles of departure, watch the center force feed. Um, doesn't even need to force feed because that tackles outside of his, uh, his combo partner, right? Tackles flat. Now at the end here is where the tackle makes a mistake. So he does a good job. He's working to the outside. He's doing pretty decent here. Could be a little bit more uh, working to the intersection, but you'll see here right at the end, he turns his shoulders back right there, right? And I try to fight that with my guys. Again, we want, it's natural to want to go attack the guy that we're blocking, especially as alignment in space where we feel a little bit less athletic. But I want, I got to know who my ball carrier is, where he's going to be, what I call my flashpoint, right? Flashpoint is where trouble arises. So I can't get beat to my flashpoint. That tailback or that ball carrier is supposed to take the ball outside of me. I need to keep fighting to stay outside. If they undercut me as I'm fighting to stay outside, all right, it's that ball carrier's job to get outside of that and be fast enough too, right? But if I go and try to be vertical through this right now before I'm engaged, he's going to get over the top of me, which is exactly what happens here. Now, tight end still somewhat outruns him, and uh, we get the first down. But uh, that slight shoulder turn could have been the difference in, in getting that linebacker out of that tackle and making it one-on-one -on -one rather than two-on-one. -on -one. So that was – that's the wide zone film that I have. How are we doing, Doug? You're good, Coach. Uh, I, got, I got a couple good. questions if you're ready for them. Or you got, you got some more? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I do have some more, but if we don't have time, we don't have time. I could go all day. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Uh, so, you, so the power run game has their counter off, uh, you know, gap scheme stuff. Do you consider this screen package type stuff to really be the counter punch to, to wide zone? Yeah, I think it's a, uh, I think there's other things to wide zone. So I think, uh, you know, I think the naked is huge off wide zone. Um, I think this helps protect the naked, but I think it also complements the wide zone. Um, we're obviously not running naked, you know, 15 times a game, but we might run wide zone 15 times a game. So if you run 15 wide zones, you run three nakeds, you run two screens, right? You're at a 25-75 split there um, with some chances for some explosive plays in the naked and the, in the screen game. Um, and then in, in the gap game, too, I think we can, you know, you have your power and your counter, but then you can also, and I've got some film on some counter stuff uh, with some screens off that as well. Um, for, for, for most guys, I don't think a lot of guys, myself included, really understand the difference between wide zone, uh, mid zone, and inside zone. So what's, in, in your eyes, what's, what's the big differentiating factor between the schemes? Um, it's angles of departure. Uh, so in our mid zone or, uh, or a tight zone or an inside zone, um, you know, we're going to be tighter angles of departure where, you know, I'm aiming maybe for the inside peck of the defender, um, and looking to drive him out. If I'm a front side offensive lineman and I'm looking to, to reach drive him is what I call it. So I'm going to bucket step and show reach, try to get him to expand then I'm going to get hand in tight and drive him through. Wide zone, I often end up doing that, and I end up driving him through. But my initial aiming point, my initial uh, angle of departure are aiming for the outside peck of the defender. So I'm getting more flow and more uh, displacement on those guys than I am in the inside, inside zone or the, the mid zone. The other thing is who we're keying. Right. And I always talk to my guys about we have to affect the key. If we don't move the key, it's on us and the tailback doesn't have a clear read. Right. So I talked a little bit about there and trusting where the tailback's going and knowing where he's going. I always talk to my guys about if you know what the tailback's looking at, you should be able to know where he's going to end up. So in wide zone, if he's looking at the DN and I get my hat outside of that DN, that tailback should go outside of me. Right. Where, uh, in 
inside zone if he's looking at the first down lineman play side, so the nose or the three technique, right? And that three technique widens, I know he's going behind, but, but again, if that three technique fights across, he should be going outside of me. Yeah. Um, so it's really, you know, angle departures, our aiming point, and those are based off of where our point of attack is. In my mid zone, our point of attack is a B gap or outside leg of the guard. And our wide zone, as we talked about, the, the tailback is aiming at the butt of the tight end. Um, so that affects how the backers flow and all that stuff. If, the, if there's no tight end, are they, is the aiming point the imaginary butt of the tight end then, or is it tighten up a little bit? 100%. 100%. Spot on, Doug. Gotcha. I appreciate you taking the time to join us, Jeff. Yeah, anytime.